Hello and welcome to Reinfuse. Today, we uh, well, you remember the other day we got Campuers Links? Well, we didn't have a power supply for it. And whilst it's DC, so it's quite an easy power supply to build, it does have the, the tiny drawback of having minus 5 volts on board. Now, you can get rid of that by making some of the components different inside. But if you don't want to change the inside, then you've got to find some way of getting that minus 5 volts. And with ATX power supplies not really providing that anymore, you have to have another solution. My solution was to build a uh, probably massively over-engineered power supply for it, which would take in an ATX feed and derive f minus 5 volts from one of those supplies. And so the boards arrived, thanks to our sponsor PCBWay, more on them in a minute, and we uh, will just put it together and we'll test out the voltages. We won't be putting it inside the machine because well, the reason I'll explain as we go along, uh, that'll be for uh, the second video for this part, uh, for this series. But uh, we should see if that actual supply is going to work for what we need it to. All right, so yes, we are building the power supply for a Cambridge computer, sorry, uh, computers links <laughs> um, computer. So the plan is we take one of these little Pico ATX supplies, very useful. They run off of 12 volts and we convert those voltages down. Obviously most of the voltages are there already. So the plus five volts and the plus 12 volts, they're already coming out of those with just the minus five that we need to do something special with. So that's what this board does. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use a uh, V7805 voltage regulator and that will take the 12 volts uh, supply and convert it to minus five. Now obviously uh, this is probably a bit overkill. <laughs> um, I suspect that because there's also a minus voltage out of here as well you can get, I suspect you'd be able to use that instead. Um, uh, and then just use a cheap V, um, not V, a cheap uh, 7905 regulator, which will just, uh, they cost about 78 pence. These cost nearer two quid, but um, I'm kind of, I'm slightly enamored by these when I did the uh, Texas Instruments power supply. So uh, yeah, they're quite easy to use. Uh, depending on the configuration, they give out plus or minus volts, five volts or whatever voltage one you get. You get 12 and nine or what have you. Um, and we just need to add a couple of capacitors, which are fairly simple. So we have a, uh, don't mind myself, uh, a 10 microfarad on the left and a 22 microfarad on the right and that will give us our voltage. Uh, the board other than that obviously this is where it puts out the the voltages. There, this is an old board by the way this is the first version I got com coming through. Uh, there's a newer one coming out. Uh, nothing wrong with the quality of the board obviously. The quality of the board is is brilliant because uh, you know it was made by our sponsor, uh, PCB Way. That's, that's called a segue. Let's, let's get into that. Before the video, I'd just like to talk about our sponsor, PCB Way. PCB Way is the one stop shop for your fabrication needs. Whether it's creating your own PCBs, browsing through their large libraries of shared products, or if you want professional grade 3D printing, CNC milling, or even shared metal fabrication and injection molding. Take a look at PCBWay.com now for great prices and a professional and quick service. We've printed a few projects with PCB Way and we've always had a, a great uh, return on it and excellent prices. Yep, so obviously thank you PCB Way for, uh, for sponsoring this video. Um, obviously I used the service, I didn't get this free, I, I bought this myself um, because uh, good quality boards, they're really quickly delivered as well and the price is pretty good so um, Yes, I am a customer as well as being sponsored by them. So, yeah, it does uh, other things as well. So we've got a switch uh, lead there because we have to be able to tell the ATX power supply to turn on. So we have to connect the PS on and ground lines and a fan just in case. I figure we put this inside a project box of some description. Having a fan is probably a good idea just with all the 
stuff running just to keep it cool. Uh, later version of the board's got a few more fits in it, well, including a, a, a space to put on uh, a light, an LED, because it's also useful. So the idea is we test this, we use this to test, make sure we're getting the voltages we expect to get. We should do, unless I've used an off-the-shelf <laughs> uh, component in my layout software to make this ATX thing. It should be correct, but I guess we'll find out in a minute. Um, and if the voltages are all correct and they're coming out, then we'll make a probably a bigger version of this. Whilst this is nice and compact, uh, if we're going to put it in a project box, we need some space and we want it to be screwed down. So we'll probably add some space on just for that, just to give these components some room to breathe as well. So without further ado, I guess we just try actually uh, soldering this thing together. Oh yeah, so the ATX header, by the way, I'd run out, so I had to buy some new ones. And these ones have got these little plastic nubs on, which my previous ones didn't. So I had to dremel a hole through to uh, to actually allow that to go to connecting. But I quite like it. Normally I have these slightly raised off the board so that it's easier to get the plug in and out. But uh, that's right against the edge, so that shouldn't be a problem. Anyway, lots of soldering. Right. <clears throat> I did them in a weird order because I was toying with just doing the pins I'm using, but I did them all in the end. I haven't put a lot of solder in. Normally you'd want the big peaks like you see on smaller solder points, but if this is wrong, then I want to be able to rescue this plug if I can, so I put less on there. Right, so now we need to uh, do the next thing, which is this. I think this goes this way. This way. I hope so. Guess we'll find out. I've also left the leg long, legs long on the V7805 because if I can recover it, I will <laughs> if I need to. Um, right, well, that's all soldered in. Uh, it's not a great job, I'm going to be the first to admit, because I am sweating so much that I had sweat in my eyes. So, uh, but I, it all seems to be soldered down. Yeah, it could have been a much better job, but it's done. It's fine. Right, so the next step is we need to connect our Pico. ATX goes in, that's the first good sign. Um, and we need to actually stick 12 volts in this thing. Uh, 12 volts center positive, obviously. Now you probably see also we haven't put a switch in. So the idea is uh, we just need to bridge that. So I will turn it on first, make sure nothing weird happens there. And then we'll try bridging that and then seeing if the voltages change. Right, I have found myself a 12 volt power supply and plugged that in. So we'll be testing the voltages at these points here. Now there's a reason why this one isn't going to be used in the final product. In fact, we're not even going to power up a, the links with this board, by the way. But uh, this is really just a kind of a proof of concept board. Uh, but one of the things is that I have reversed those labels there. It's a bit dangerous, even if you're doing it for yourself and you uh, you know what the markings are supposed to be. You shouldn't put a board with bad markings into your machine, just in case you set it on and someone tries to modify the board and everything goes wrong. So yeah, so these are actually reversed. So where it says plus 12 volts there, that's actually that side. And so everything is basically switched over. So uh, we'll be testing the opposite way, as long as we remember. <laughs> I'm sure if we see some weird results, then we will... Uh, probably remember that's the reason why I guess we'll find out uh, the other thing is I've also sold it on this header here you can just about see that there you go so that header there is for the uh, the switch so we will um, by bridging that we're powering this on so first of all we're going to test this um, 
There you go. Make sure you can still see those points. We're just going to test this with the switch off. So we should be getting basically zero uh, across the board or thereabouts. At least other than that, because this should not be powered on with the switch off. So let's just turn on the actual power supply. <coughs> okay, so that's on. Let's switch this to DC voltage. And now, remembering the board is the wrong way around. So the thing that says plus plus 12 volts there was actually ground. So if we touch that against, I'm trying to get all these wires out of the way so we can see the screen properly. Yeah, you can see that, that's good. So we've touched that against there. That's zero. And the next one should be minus five, although it says plus five, also zero. And that'll actually be ground, so we'll leave that one. That should be plus five, zero, and that should be plus five zero okay so that's good that's what we expect to see so now if we power this off again and then bridge the on off button there we go just got a jumper cable to test this there we go so this should now trigger the uh, power supplies power button so on a real pc if this is being used it would be when you push the front panel button on so let's turn this on again so now hopefully we'll actually get some voltages so this again is ground not plus 12 volts you see that yeah that's good so this should be 12 volts yeah close enough this should be minus five yep yeah. Uh, that's ground, so this should be plus five. Yep, and this should also be plus five. Yes, okay, so we've got the voltages we expect to get. That's good. So uh, let's power this all off, and then we'll go and do a summary of what we've done and what we're doing next. Not uh, particularly exciting uh, <laughs> video, I know, but we have now proved the concept of the, for the power supply for the uh, computer's links. Pretty sure it's going to work anyway. It's not exactly a massively complicated circuit. Uh, we will know more, obviously, when it's inside a machine. Obviously, again, not with this version because it's... Um, it was... It's missing a few components on that labelling. I'm not happy putting a board into a computer or even in an external power block, which it eventually will be in, uh, when the labeling is wrong like that, it, it's just, it's too risky. So what we will do is we will order up the new boards. Those new boards will come through from our sponsor, PCBWay. Um, and we will also find a way of uh, putting that inside some kind of project box so that we can uh, have a, a fairly professional looking, or at least vaguely professional looking power supply for our computer's link, which will hopefully work. We still don't know if it works or not. But we will find that out uh, a lot in the other episode, along with building that power supply up. Right. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please hit like. If you really like the video, please hit subscribe. If you didn't like the video or you have something else to say, then please leave it in the comments below. And don't forget, you can join us on Patreon to get access to early and also exclusive videos, and also on YouTube membership for the same things. See you next time. The future looks bleak Remember our childhood To get us through the week We're getting re-enthused Back to the past And the things we used We all know that our pasts were great Escaping the things that today we hate Getting re-enthused Getting re-enthused Getting re-enthused Getting re-enthused